You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hello, hello, my lovely herbal friend. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this episode. I wanted to chat a bit about just some of the bigger mistakes that I see on social media and all kinds of other places when it comes to making your own herbal remedies at home. And I'm not sure how long you've listened to me or how much of my story that you know about, but I used to run an herbal product line that sold in natural health food stores all across the U.S. I also sold them to naturopathic physicians' offices and other healthcare providers and Amazon and REI and all the places. And I've always been really, really passionate about creating herbal remedies that work really well, right? Because why do it if it's not going to like really improve somebody's health? But I'm also a firm believer that these things need to taste good because I think we all know by now that there is a lot of stuff out there that's pretty nasty. And I also wanted to bring this up to you because I know so many of us today are struggling in our economy and recognizing that maybe our Western healthcare system is not so much of a healthcare system, but more of a a sick care system, and that we need to start in our own families, making our own remedies, connecting with the plants, really understanding that this is the same medicine that all of your family and ancestors used. And when you start to understand that and start to get to know the plants, start to understand how they work with you and your unique body and anybody else in your family and how they work maybe differently across the board within your home. It definitely is not uncommon to hear something like that. And really the truth, like I went into the store the other day I was picking up my daughter from school. We homeschool, but she goes to a charter one day a week. And I wanted to stop in the grocery store and just see like how much things like elderberry syrup were on the store shelves. And I am not kidding you when I say I was absolutely mind blown. It was anywhere from like $13 for a really low quality four ounce bottle of elderberry syrup from a brand I would never buy from because I know that I'm going to make mine 20 times better, all the way up to $47 for an eight ounce bottle. 
That is insane. You can make your own elderberry syrup for just a few bucks. You can make your own tinctures for so much less. And if you end up making them in a little bit more bulk, then you can even help your family members, your extended family members, or people in your community with the remedies that you're making. And it's really just so much fun. I think when I ran my product line, one of the best things I ever had happen for me, it was just the feeling of getting the emails, getting the calls, having people walk into my apothecary and tell me that whatever I had formulated for them has drastically improved their health and that people have never found something that works as well as whatever I've created. And of course, it's the plants that do a lot of the jobs, but there's there's a lot of art and science to the whole formulating of these remedies and the whole making of them so that you know they're going to really live up to their maximum potency. But that feeling, that feeling of like, oh my gosh, (laughs) I just help somebody. I help somebody live and feel better. Like it is the most beautiful feeling ever. And I've, I've been discovering the feeling of helping students learn to do this. And then watching them send me texts of other people that are being healed by their products and their herbal remedies and things like that. And that is like a whole nother level. Like, oh my gosh, I'm really making herbalism spread like wildflowers is the best thing ever. Yeah, I get giddy about it. I get so excited about it. But I mean, that's truly my mission here on this planet. Like, if there were something to hear about one's dharma or their true purpose in life, like, I am here to spread the good world word about the importance of using plants as medicine because it it's better for you. It's better for your family. It's better for your wallet, goodness gracious. And it is so much better for our planet. And I really love our planet. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, so let's talk about some of the mistakes or common ways that I see out there that people are having trouble with all kinds of herbal remedies. So, um, number one. Herbal remedies are awesome and folk remedies are amazing. They are so much fun to create and there's so much room for, well, for lack of a better word, creativity and shifting things in different ways. But sometimes you may not know if that folky remedy actually works. So there's actual science to good herbal formulation, and that includes understanding what constituents of a plant are soluble in what kind of menstruum or solvent. So what do I mean by that? Well, one plant can have many different medicinal constituents, and each one of those medicinal constituents can impact your body or your health in one different way or another. Those medicinal constituents, each one, even in one plant individually, may also be soluble in one thing, let's say alcohol, if we're talking tinctures, maybe we're talking vinegar, maybe we're talking water, there's so many different solvents or menstruum that you could choose from. But what I'm saying is it's really important to understand what is soluble in these particular menstruum or solvents. One thing I see often is people being really excited about the nutrition level of nettles because they're freaking amazing and one of the more nutrient-dense plants out there. And then they're like, yay, I'm going to make a tincture of these nettles. And they go get their bottle of vodka, their 80 proof or 40% vodka and their fresh nettles and, and they make a tincture which is lovely and dark and green and really cool to look at. But the problem is they want the tincture specifically for its nutritional benefits, but the alcohol is not going to extract those very well. Now with just the 40%, there's still 60% water. So maybe some of that water might extract it. Um, Still probably not to the greatest of your liking to really absorb those nutrients into your body. The other problem is when you are making a 40% alcohol by volume 
vodka-based tincture, more often than not with a fresh plant, you're not going to be extracting the medicinal benefits that you're desiring from that particular plant. I think I use that example a lot with marshmallow root too and tinctures because marshmallow root is a really beautiful mucilaginous herb and I love it so much during cold and flu season and for skincare and for Um, digestive health and all kinds of really wonderful benefits to this plant. But when people I'll see on social media are making a tincture of it, and they're like, yay, I'm ready for cold and flu season. And I'm so sad for them because their intention seems to be that they are going to be using this for a sore throat throughout that season. But it is the mucilage and the polysaccharides that are what makes this so slippery and cooling and moistening on things like dry mucosal tissue, like the respiratory tract. And (laughs) those aren't extractable or in vodka or alcohol. Sorry. (laughs) I just got distracted. I just saw my little daughter go by and, and had a little brain fart in the middle of my talk there. So, um, anyways, That is a whole rant I go on often, um, but it's a legit rant. Like, why spend your time, your money, the plants, all of that to make remedies that aren't really going to work for you? Like, I I don't have time for that, personally. I want, like, my medicine to work for my family. The other thing is, like, a lot of people, as they get into it, you get so excited about knowing all of the herbs because there's so many to know and it's so much fun. Fun and how great would it be to have an apothecary of 300, 400 herbs? It's pretty cool. I've been there. And even in my time of running an actual herbal apothecary with customers coming in and out of the door all of the time, I still mostly turn to about 20 different plants. So it's okay to just stick to the basic plants out there and really take your time in getting to know them. Because one way I like to look at it is You are going to be a much more effective herbalist um, if you get to know how to use one plant 40 different ways versus using or finding 40 different plants that you know how to use only one way. I hope I said that well. I hope it connects. But basically what I'm saying is most herbal plants, most medicinal plants have many, many di- m- different medicinal uses. Goodness gracious, I feel like I the brain fart has not relieved itself from my body. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of good medicine in one plant. We're actually doing like deep dives in my Kids Safe Herb Club each month, where we cover many different ways you can use one plant. So you can really take your time and get to know that plant is really it. So let's talk another reason why your remedies may not work so well. Um, Number one, really making sure you are getting high quality herbs because good medicine starts with great ingredients. Okay. Like you can really be tripped up in this industry. There's a lot of people out there that are just out there to pump out this plant-like material. And a lot of times it is not even the plant that they're saying it is, or it's been adulterated in many different ways. And you can end up doing more harm than good in that way. There's also tons of herbs out on the market that are just dried and old and icky and yuck. And like, who wants that? That's not going to have any vitality, any vibrance, any like, voom, voom, voom. I am full of life. Although I am dried and picked, I still have energy. I still have good medicine. You can really tell the difference, like just by smelling an herb once you get to know them or looking at the color or just feeling it. You can really, really tell. And starting with great ingredients is important. It's so important. And my favorite places to get herbs from, number one, grow your own. Grow your own medicinal herbs. Number two, if you are going to wildcraft or forage, please stick to the outrageously abundant weeds. They've got everything that you need. They really do. You don't have to go for the exotic stuff. If you even think that you are, please check out United Plant Savers before even going down that road and see if it is an at-risk species or um, if there's anything else major to think about when it comes to wildcrafting those particular herbs. 
The other place I really love to go to is to find my local organic herb farmer. And I highly recommend you make best friends with your local organic herb farmer so they can grow great medicine for you. Like their work is hard work and they deserve the extra couple of bucks you might spend over the crap quality stuff you're going to get on Amazon or wherever you're going to. So definitely support them. I love Oshala Herb Farm. If you haven't dug back like three years to one of my first podcast episodes, I did have Elise Higley, the founding lady of the farm, her and her husband, Jeff, amazing people. I love them so much. And when I ran my herbal product line, my teas were so flavorful and so good. And I've got to credit them and the incredible love and energy and intention they put into the earth and to the plants that made those blends so darn amazing. So they're incredible. Uh, definitely check them out. If you are a Medicine Making Mamas member, you get 15% off with them, which is pretty sweet. But that's not the only reason I'm plugging them. They're like really, really good. Um, Another one, I mean... Mountain Rose Herbs is great. They're like the biggest herb supplier. They do run a very sustainable operation. I've toured all of their facilities. Uh, I know Sean, the owner, and many of the people that have worked there with them that are just stellar human beings. I always had a good time at trade shows and expos with my product line, though I would get bombed on the times that they sent my booth, my tiny little Mountain Mel's booth next to Mountain Rose, big, huge budget booth. (laughs) But it was cool because, you know, I could always herb nerd out with the people working there. But they're kind of like my almost last stop that I go to when I'm shopping for herbs. Like I start with growing my own. Then I look for the wild stuff that is in great abundance. Then I support the local organic herb farmers. Then I turn to Oshala. And then if I can't find what I get need, um, there's a few other suppliers out there, but I really, then I go to Mountain Rose. Um, Okay, so yes, good medicine starts with great ingredients. And then another thing that is so important is just... I wanted to take a quick pause to show some love and gratitude to our sponsors of the Herbalist Path podcast, who make this show possible for me and possible for you, too. So here it goes. Medicinal mushrooms are all the rage these days, if you didn't know already. And with great reason, because they are powerful medicine that can improve your health and your life in so many different ways when they're well made. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of stuff on the market that isn't going to be so effective. And that's why you need to find a brand that you can actually trust. For me, that brand is Whole Sun Wellness. And this is the creation of a brilliant woman and fellow mama, Jamie Bonfiglio. She's an international mushroom educator that has been working in the medicinal mushroom industry for years. And this is when she saw firsthand how many other companies take shortcuts when it comes to their products. And Jamie wasn't having it. She set out to build her company the right way. Whole Sun Wellness is here to raise the industry standards so those crap mushrooms on the market aren't getting into your body or your family's body. Whole Sun Wellness is the first company to test and report nutritional facts for all of their extracts. They go beyond industry standards every step of the way, from sourcing to extraction and final testing. And as the owners of the largest medicinal mushroom farm in the United States, Whole Sun Wellness is taking control of their supply chain for the highest quality and absolute full transparency. They're even the first company to include pure mycelium extract in every single product. So when you're thinking of getting medicinal mushrooms for you and your family, Whole Sun Wellness is exactly the ones you want. Also, be sure to check out their new Mycolites. These are the world's first dissolvable electrolyte tablets. They're featuring functional mushroom extracts that'll give you more energy, more stamina, and recovery as well. And who couldn't use all of that? 
The other thing is they are these adorable little mushroom shaped tablets and they come in like a little Altoids box, but way cooler than Altoids because they're Mycolites. Anyways, head to wholesunwellness.com to grab yourself some mycolites and all of the other functional medicinal mushrooms that you and your family need. And of course, you can grab that link right here in the show notes now. Learning to actually measure some of your ingredients. Like I do love folk remedies. I do love the toss a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm really grateful that I have invested a lot of time and energy and experimentation and moldy remedies and stuff rusty lids and all the things. I've dumped more um, concoctions than I care to ever admit in my 20 plus years of doing this. Um, But learning to measure and really figure out what's going in your medicine. If you're like looking for some serious medicine that's like really going to work and you want to know how much to dose your kiddos or anybody else, start measuring. Start measuring your herbs, start measuring your menstruum, understand your alcohol content, understand what you are extracting. Um, Another one, another big, big one is ignoring contraindications. Y'all, herbs are natural. Natural is not synonymous with safe. In fact, there are many natural plants out there that can unalive you quickly. Also, understanding what herbs may be contraindicated with various medications or other health scenarios. Like, that stuff is scary, you guys. Like, it, this is a serious gig. This is, while it is herbal or natural medicine, it is still medicine and your health matters and there is a lot of complexity that goes into it. So, um, I'm going to get on a soapbox on that one. That's the clinical herbalist and me coming out going, watch what you're taking. <laughs> Um, the other one is making sure you're storing your remedies properly, at least if you don't want them to get moldy or just kind of deteriorate in their medicinal potency, things along those lines. It's going to differ per herb and per solution, but more often than not, you do want like a dark, cool space where your herbs are. That's why you'll see like tinctures and other concoctions are in dark bottles and jars because then the sunlight isn't getting to the plants, which will end to, excuse me, end up ultimately breaking it down and just keeping the right amount of moisture depending on if we're talking about oils or if we're talking about dried herbs or if we're talking about tinctures or vinegars. Like, again, it goes in so many different ways that you can play with that. Um, It's really a lot of fun. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to give you all of these warnings to scare you from making great medicine. Like, get out there and play Risk the moldy experiments, risk the, uh, all the things, right? It's a blast. There's so much room for creativity. It feels so incredibly empowering to know that you don't have to rely on going to the drugstore all the time, especially like last year when they ran out of everything and now seeing how the prices are already like so freaking high. It's insane. Um, Yeah, I just think that there's no better time than now to make your own medicine. If you want to dive deeper, if you really want to start to understand like how different herbs work on the body and what kind of medicinal constituents go with what kind of solvents and vice versa, what energetics mean, what herbal actions mean, and how you can be much more strategic in formulating your remedies so they are going to actually work. And also, so if you're taking them internally, that you can make them so they taste good. So it's enjoyable. So it's like more of a part of your life. I do have my Medicine Making Mamas program. Depending on when you listen to this, it's open for enrollment. But I and I have some really cool bonuses right now, like one year access to my Kids Safe Herb Club. That's where we cover some herbal safety basics. And then we are doing a deep dive study on one herb a month. We do herbal show and tell at the end to see what everybody's learned and learned from one another. There's also So six weeks of live Q&A coming up. So if you want to troubleshoot, if we want to make medicine together virtually, or if you have like big questions, what should I put here? How do I do this? 
that's a really great place to go and also listen to other people in the community and their questions. And then the other big bonus is something new. I am now offering herb bucks and it's basically like a gift certificate. So you can use that towards any of my herbal workshops or programs or classes that I have available. And if you decide to join me in Medicine Making Mamas by this Thursday, I'm recording this on a Monday night, September 25th. So um, I think it's the 28th or the 29th, 28th of September, you'll get $200 in herb bucks. Anyways, um, that's what's happening right now. You can join Medicine Making Mamas later as well, but those cool, groovy little bonuses aren't going to be there. I'm super excited to welcome a whole new round of beautiful medicine makers into the program and watch them learn and grow and send me messages on how they've helped to heal people in their community or their puppies or their uncle or their parents. And it's, uh, it's such a cool honor. It's very similar to the honor of knowing that I made remedies for people that worked so well that it changed their health and made them feel incredibly wonderful. Like what an honor. What an honor. Again, it's the plants doing the work, but just the ability to understand the plants, to be able to sit with the plants and listen to them and have them say, yes, let's go over here and be in this remedy for this person. Like, it's a gift. It's a skill. It's a lot of fun. And it was great having my herbal product line, but I just came to a point in my life where it is time for me to teach you how to fish instead of giving people all of the fish. So that's my jam. Um, I love it. I'm going on kind of rambly. My point, I hope that you learned something new in this episode today and that you are going to start playing with the most amazing herbal remedies. You are going to have fun with it. You are going to start thinking outside of just the Instagram or TikTok box of the latest reel and understand that there is some strategy and science to this game. Um, and most of all, keep doing it. Like keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep listening to the plants. Keep tasting the plants. Keep being with the plants. Keep sharing the plants. Keep making herbalism spread like wildflowers and share it with your neighbors. Share it with your friends. Let them think you're the crazy, wacky, natural, hippie herb lady if they must. Maybe it's not all those titles. Whichever ones you got, embrace it. <laughs> okay, I'm going on such a rambling rant. I um, I do hope to invite you into or see you inside of my Medicine Making Mamas program. If not, no worries. I will also be launching Kids Safe Herb Club officially very, very soon. It's another fun program. And come check out my new Herbalist Path community. It's pretty amazing. There's over 750 people in there right now. It's off of social media. It is a space where we all come together because we want to learn to use plants as medicine to help our families live better lives and help ourselves live better lives. And all the other divisiveness bullshit that is out on social media is not allowed in that community. So anyways, uh, it's been really fun watching it grow. And again, thank you. Thank you for listening to this. I will stop rambling at you now. I will see you in the next episode of The Herbalist Path. Take care. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Alicampane to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.